So we look at uh, the digital commons. Um, so on the technology side <coughs> and inside the applications and inside of the, the digital economy, what are the, the, the commons part? What are the shareable things that we can share and work together within an ecosystem and between ecosystems globally? So we have the data model. So the data model itself is not the database where you put the information, it's just the model, how to structure that data. And it brings benefits by having that as a commons to build data sharing exchange interfaces and converters to convert existing data between common data structure and vice versa. So if I have database A and another actor database B, we both have uncommon structure. The question shouldn't be, do I change for your structure or do you change for my structure? But the approach should be that let's both communicate through a open standard model. I'll convert it to that and then you can read it from that format into your own system. Or if building a new system, it's like, okay, now I don't want to even think of how my data model in my system should look like. If there's a standard model, I can apply that and I know I don't need any converters after that. And if I'm doing research data, so if I'm collecting secondary data, into what format should I change, save that if I want that, that research data to be available to others? Again, when there's a standard, an open standard, that makes sense to use that, even if then using also other formats, it doesn't, doesn't uh, change. The business logic, the business logic is specifically the, the, the framework, the development phases, shared best practices, uh, KPIs, benchmarking. So looking at those that are mainly on the measure side and, uh, and uh, proven models that work, um, those make sense to spread and work together to improve those. And of course, there will always be new that will later develop into new best practice and so forth, but that's a, 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 a something that, that will evolve, but the understanding of working that business logic. APIs and documentation. So APIs is the interface where to access data and features. So with shared data model, and business logic, more and more APIs can be shared as well. So efficient and cost-effective documentation and translation. So if we have shared APIs, we can have, it's like those, um, those electric outlets, the sockets, so that the more they are the same, the less we need to have different instructions and different ways of how you can use, so different, less of adapters are needed is the more they are the same, the more cost-effective it is to use them, uh, the more cost-effective is to document them. And again, it doesn't say what, what is specifically the data that is available or what, in what terms I can access that. It just says, how can I connect to it? And then, then that's, that's a big part. Then when we can go deeper in the software features, we can have functions as a service so let's say there's a uh, register a new account or analyze this data for that output or do this or do that. Those individual software pieces can be separated from the application itself and made shareable. So typical things that you can find like the big Amazons and, and Googles are sharing are like image recognition reading images and recognizing text or people or places and you can access that feature through an API or face recognition. So whether it's good or not, whether it's scary or not, doesn't matter. Anyone, any developer can access um, face recognition software through an API, doesn't need to build their own. So those are functions that can be shared and developed in an ecosystem context the same way. Users and data and user data. So ecosystem already different support functions include shared users, shared customers. So 
uh, and, and startup is or talent is taking part of multiple events by multiple different organizers of the event, sharing the customer. Uh, a customer can be, you know, in the lawyer's shop, uh, in an incubator, and uh, in the funding instrument at the same time. And if everyone calculates, you know, I have 300, I have 500, I have 700, and then you count those numbers together, that's not rep rep representing the actual number uh, of the customers. So that's the measuring problem, but also how to uh, share customer base so that if I have an event for Business Model Canvas, it would be really great to be able to just know and share information about related event for the same audience. So that would be the shared uh, users. And of course, everything of these needs separate rights and permissions and access. But that's the that's the thinking of what is commons. And of course, then the data that uh, is also with the users. And then ecosystem applications. So then the complete applications for uh, for creating a business plan or or doing an online business model uh, canvas exercise or an event system or an education system or a scoring system. So entire application can of course made open source, build as a global or common standard and distribute that. And that's a choice of anyone who already have existing applications to just take that type of strategy position and start planning that way. And all of these uh, digital commons is something that we, of course, want to contribute for, what we can want to help develop, what we want to support, what we want to help spread information of any of these uh, and help bring this uh, digital side commons into life as well. When enough ecosystems mature and start doing this, when there is enough ecosystem operators who can actually handle these types of activities uh, in a more permanent, ongoing fashion with proper resources in place. But it doesn't require, again, to start that. Everything starts from somewhere. The first step, the smallest step, the key is to understand what is the big picture and how to get there. So if we look at the, 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 the more of the structure of the ecosystem operators team, like what types of people there should be in that team. So for sure, we have established that it shouldn't be uh, a team that is only you know, technical, or it shouldn't be a team that is only uh, non-technical business operations. That just uses you know, one developer or a outsourced IT company to help bring them and install them some applications, what they use, or that they just use whatever uh, SaaS applications are available in the cloud. It requires a, more of a team that has both sides represented. So having operative ecosystem management type of roles having communication coordinators. So this is more like a, a customer side communication. It can be, you know, customer support. It can be marketing side, uh, having product managers. So those who understand business perspective of what the products actually should look like, products being the applications, uh, processes, uh, data sharing products, uh, and so forth from a business perspective and having technical project manager uh, that understand technical perspective of ecosystem development uh, from non, like non-technical side, but ecosystem development itself without the software can get pretty technical. But the point being understanding that. And then on the other side, having uh, more from the software world side, like user experience designer. They are the least technical people on the software world. Uh, they really empathize with the actual users and non-business, uh, non-technical users. And then you have the software front-end developers, those who create 
the visible part of how the application works for the normal users. And then you have the software backend developers, those who create the actual functions to make the processes and the business logic work. And also the data models, the application programming interfaces, the APIs, the documentation is then built collectively between all of the different actors, making sure that the documentation is capable of communicating all of the different aspects. And then you have system administrators who look after the entire architecture. Where does the software run? Is it running safely? Is it, is it securely? Is it operational? Is it functional? How well is it running? Is there you know, issues? Uh, how does the new software functions get apply, applied and put in place and so forth? So the key really is, if here would be good to have those, that brain picture in the background to communicate really the, the balance of the team. <clears throat> and then uh, moving to the ecosystem architecture with the team and uh, applying our learnings so giving some rational and background information to all of the topics that we are covering and giving more of a timeline perspective into the digital transformation and technology world. So this is very much, um, this is from Linux Foundation. So they are very much on top of uh, global developments when it comes to technology side. Um, information uh, and trends in the application development side. We have the timeline there. <clears throat> we have some known brands there just to give some idea of kind of, you know, sense of time and the types of applications, you know, eBay, it's web only, you know, 2008 iPhone was introduced, you have Twitters and Facebooks, 2010, iPad, Android, uh, a kind of a next level. Uh, 2012 corporate platforms, Best Buys, at and Teams, moving. 2014 Tesla, Nest, coming to like understanding uh, and so forth. And then the type of language, focusing only on the key language here. Again, doesn't need to go deeper. So. Uh, monotonic applications, mainly server side. So monotonic applications installed in a server, typically, you know, not in the cloud, but in a physical, you know, closet of an organization. Uh, iPhone time, still monotonic application, but for web and mobile. Uh, and then 2010 is really where the API started to really kind of emerge more in the online space, in the more kind of mainstream. And, uh, but it's still connecting these like monotonic apps, applications together. And, uh, and then 2014, the, the new term uh, microservices basically means that this big one software in a package uh, were started to separate into multiple more modular pieces. So that means they can be more independently running, more independently developed, more shareable, and then increasing the number of APIs, of course, connecting those microservices with each other and so forth. And the key really being that the monotonic applications started to disappear uh, when it comes to developing new things in 2018 uh, so no more monotonic applications is not it's a it's a passing trend and then introducing microservices uh, as, a, as a main thing and new thing emerging called serverless and all the time like starting from some mobile apis to many apis to just apis and like unlimited number of APIs uh, is, is, is how to look at this. And the, the, the trend there shows the volume 
of Google Trends. So basically meaning how much of those are searched. Uh, so it's really communicating um, uh, the trend of where the volume significantly increased in level and where that volume, how it accelerated forward. And uh, a useful exercise on top of this is to show uh, the timeline uh, for how long we have been looking at this space period from uh, ecosystem uh, development perspective. So looking the digital aspect of startup ecosystem development so far. Uh, and uh, we started to develop uh, ecosystem applications uh, a monotonic application on top of uh, ecosystem development support activities in 2011. And uh, we, we worked with the technologies that were available then. And we built a big monotonic uh, ecosystem application until uh, 2015, 16, 15, 16 where we realized that the whole technology, basically the monotonic application approach, is outdated and it never can work in an ecosystem, basically meaning the same way as it, it, those applications don't work in uh, big organizations as well. And, uh, and we started, basically took all of the uh, business operational non-technical learnings of the application and digital side and started from scratch built on top of the growing trends of uh, microservices serverless and apis so everything that uh, that that we have worked since 2016 has been based on this uh, future-oriented uh, models and trends. And that's also what we are covering here, but it's valuable to share where that has come from so that we can also, uh, when we work with ecosystem development, we can easily identify what are the outdated models and, and whether the actors, specifically technology people and software guys and you know, those who create the technology solutions, whether they are on top of their own game that they know where the actual uh, uh, digital economy is heading and what are the relevant technologies. So that we can help to improve and communicate and avoid uh, kind of painting yourself in a corner type of challenges, or on the other hand, to help bridge whatever the current uh, setup and situation is uh, to make you know, these adapter-based moves in between while making transitions to uh, the technologies that can be more uh, future lasting. And as a side project also with this, uh, we realized that, uh, that it's not sensible for us to work on building a lot of the different softwares, that we only focus on the key elements um, and rather support those who develop the, the softwares that are future oriented and help bring more of the, the ecosystem commons uh, sharing and the tools that are needed to enable that sharing and working with shared commons by others and contributing to those uh, because that makes us even more neutral actor uh, to be able to do more scalable approach to support as many ecosystems as possible. So we, we, we have um, went through that learning and also um, applied that learning into um, the ecosystem development on the digital economy side. And we are, we still are able and we want to support anything that needs to get kind of off the ground, uh, but we don't want to be operationally responsible for those uh, in long term because it doesn't, it doesn't belong to us. It's not what we want to do. It's not what ecosystem should want us to do because the, these capabilities need to be built in their own uh, ecosystem. 
and we look at then you know the roaming between the ecosystems and comparability and compatibility and the knowledge sharing between the ecosystem from our perspective um, so that the silo problem doesn't emerge so uh, a, a, a one perspective into combining a software development kind of uh, key terminology <coughs> from the operational side and uh, giving some time perspective here so when we look at the earlier part of the timeline from the previous picture the traditional used to be you know this waterfall approach like design everything that the application does in a like from end to end before you build anything and then you would build a big monolithic application that basically does all the business logic that was thought by you know some design team a long time ago and then built the whole thing and then it used to the software was run in a physical server typically in the company you know facilities and then the outdating model already is like this agile software development so it was more instead of we design it once and then we build it was like we design a piece of it we build this piece of it we uh, design more we build more we design more we build more we design more and so forth so that's the agile uh, approach to software development so applying the learnings of the application actually in use to influence what are the next features and functionalities to be developed and then uh, where these softwares were run were typically in, in private clouds so more of in facility but multiple private uh, server setups current this could already be seen uh, also updating is that instead of that software development team uh, just working on their own now the DevOps became broader, including taking into account also where the software is run uh, into the development cycle. So uh, now it became relevant that, okay, <clears throat> to improve the software development efficiency, we need to modularize the software. So instead of building these big applications, because of the, any update into that big application was going to be a big upgrade process you know in the server side so to be able to be more flexible let's break that into microservices so that we can then build and more actively develop this and that meant to include uh, the server administration side so the operation side so those who operate the software when it's running and then no ops was the next phase is, is this uh, notion that we should no longer separate uh, the developers and where the software is running uh, it's or the business side for that matter what kind of uh, software we should build but we should all understand and just look at it as as a um, you know same as you know everyone knows how to write and everyone knows how to read type of mindset and uh, in the in the architecture perspective it was even to continue put those used to be one big application to modular application and even further uh, piecing that out into functions as a service and and then also removing the whole concept of, of server to restrict from thinking of okay how do we run the software where does the software run and instead introduce this concept of serverless computing which is the current and of course a lot of coming this from amazon and google and so forth where you don't need to think about the servers in any context anymore you just deploy the software directly as you would deploy um, anything that you want to work you don't need to have a server um, in a conceptual mind anymore of course servers are still there but you don't need to worry about server softwares and things like that you just deploy the software functions individually and they keep running and the cloud side is taking care of uh, the whole maintenance of 
all of that running. So then that becomes more cloud network of operating system. So a, a totally different uh, aspect. So this is the timeline from different perspective on the architectural side uh, or the whole software side. And when we look at this ecosystem now from the perspective of these different segments, uh, we have uh, the business creators in the middle building both ideas into products, into businesses and new talent becoming co-founders and uh, a growing organization and then we have the segment of support providers supporting each of these different functions through different services with different events with different uh, support processes and having the ecosystem operators uh, strategically developing the whole ecosystem and then uh, looking at the digital here <clears throat> And now we look at the architecture of an ecosystem from the perspective that each of these uh, uh, service side um, applications are one that includes data from two sides, the service itself and then the customer that they are serving and their data. So each of the applications always have these two sides if they are serving the customers. <clears throat> so we have applications like event system, evaluating tools, project management tools, online forums, matchmaking tools, mentoring applications, funding platforms, accounting and so forth. And on both and or all of these we have two sides to collect and build the data infrastructure. One is for the data that goes uh, from the service side information, from the service side data to connect with other services. And then we have uh, the customer's data, individual's data coming from one service to be portable to another service and to build more holistic perspective of, from the measuring perspective of how many shared customers do we have, but also from the perspective of how does the customer look like from various different data points uh, combined. And again, everything is permissionless or open. That's a separate decision. This is more uh, for the technical architecture. <clears throat> and on top of that, then on the ecosystem orchestration and operational level, uh, totally different uh, new types of applications or rather interfaces into that data um, can be built as well. So, one connection per application to connect to any number of other connected applications. So that's the infrastructure part. So that uh, we focus on, on designing, enabling and building these types of solutions. Again, building means uh, helping others to build or helping your local organizations or your, your local developers or your local software companies, whoever you want to build them. But the key is how to design them how to make sure their interoperability works, what is their standard models between other ecosystems, what are the standard KPIs and so forth. But the key is that having a system that takes away the heavy lifting so that everyone just can focus on, we only need to make our application open for business. That's it. Whatever that is, we need to make our application open for business. That's our responsibility. And, and that's everyone who wants to connect, that's what they need to do. And someone can help and support them on that locally or globally. It's just a decision who, how that wants to be made. And then an ecosystem digital level, someone needs to look after as an ecosystem operator, <coughs> the entire, how does that infrastructure then helps them to connect. So that's how the responsibility is. Uh, basically di divide. The key is that everyone has the same shared holistic picture of the whole thing to understand what is the rationale and logic and how everything works and makes sense to be able to do their own job effectively and so that it makes sense and that they can feel comfortable doing that knowing that their data will not 
magically leave if 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 they connect or making a separate decision that we are not going to make ourselves open for business because we don't want to share data. That's a separate decision to decide whether you do what data you do to share, when do you share it from the decision of do we want to have that connectivity in place in case we want to share or in case we want to receive data. And the same on the user side. <coughs> so here the solution, the concept that we have is to show a pass to have ecosystem level user account to help make uh, the, the user's data portable between the applications. So that application in the early development side, uh, phase, like research organization or university, can know uh, what happens in the, um, in the scaling phase. Or uh, when you know, customer enters from another service, you can see where did they come from, what have been worked so far, what knowledge have been accumulated, again, depending on what that data is that is being uh, tracked for. And when we combine these, now we have the perspective into each of the application, um, basically being able to make any data flow uh, between any application who wants to send or receive data whether it's open or permissionless, uh, open or per permission. And uh, the key is again to understand the whole infrastructure and how to make it functional. And based on that knowledge, then it's possible to actually make it. And those who can make it, there's more and more people, uh, but the, the challenge is to be able to, 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 to imagine it from you know, that invisible ecosystem as how everything should be done and with what means. So that's what we're breaking down as a shared commons uh, with all of those who want to um, move into the digital transformation in their ecosystems. <clears throat>